Fisk Planetarium, this is Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Dr. Doug Duncan at the Fisk Planetarium. How do you hear me? Dr. Duncan, this is Mike Fossum, commander of Expedition 29 on the International Space Station, loud and clear. Emily, your, your body definitely has to adjust to gravity. Right now, your body's working hard. Your bones are working just to hold you up as you stand there. Uh, and your heart has to work to move the blood from down in your legs up to your heart and lungs and then to your brain. It, up here, it doesn't have to work so hard. And so your body adapts by getting kind of lazy and your bones get weak if you don't work out and, uh, and to stay healthy. Hi, my name is Stephanie. My question is, what do you eat in space? Hey, Stephanie, we eat a lot of the same things that you might eat at home. Uh, they're just kind of used sometimes packaged a little differently. I have some with me right here. When we want to drink, uh, you know, an, when we want to drink some orange juice, we can't just pour a glass of orange juice because it would fall out of the glass it wouldn't it'd make a, a real mess and so what we do is we have our things like orange juice inside a bag like this and I'm gonna come just a little closer so you can see this and I'm gonna try not to make too much of a mess but see that that's the orange juice coming out of the bag then I have to catch it <laughs> and let's say that other foods we have are things like this. It's broccoli and cheese, and so it looks doesn't look very good, does it? Like this, it's not. It's they've taken all of the water out of it. It's dehydrated. It's kind of like camping food. So we add hot water, wait a few minutes, and it uh, it all reconstitutes and and turns into something good to eat. Now some of the things we eat. Uh, don't need water, uh, or they don't need any fancy uh, any fancy things. Let me show you that. You know, some things we eat are just like you eat at home. We just catch them differently. Little chocolate covered candies. My question is, how do you keep track of time? <laughs> He's still having fun eating, isn't he? Oh, yeah, I am. Uh, Lacey, that's a good question, because day and night don't, make, don't mean much here. We go around the globe in 90 minutes. And so we have a day and a night every 90 minutes. And so that doesn't, you know, we can't pay, we don't know what time it is by looking out the window and checking the sun. So we have to use our watches. And we set a time, and it's a, a, a GMT or standard time, and we wake up based on the clock. And we turn on the lights in, when it's daytime up here. And when it's nighttime, we turn down the lights so that our bodies adjust to, to, uh, to thinking it's time to uh, go to sleep. What a great question. There you go. Hi, my name is Anthony, and my question is, what kind of experiments do you do? Hey, Anthony, we do lots of different kinds of experiments right here. My crewmate Satoshi just a few minutes ago got done planting seeds. 
in a, in a special experiment to see how the roots grow differently. And on, on Earth, the plant, the seed knows how to grow. It gets covered up with dirt. Well, so how does the seed know whether to put the roots up or the roots down? It knows because of gravity. And the, so the gravity tells the roots which way to grow. And so it's very interesting to study how plants grow up here where there's no gravity to tell the roots which direction to go. Uh, we do a lot of things with crystals. When, when uh, certain materials go from being a liquid to being solid, turning hard, they form crystals inside. And we can learn a lot about, the, about those materials by studying the crystals. Um, and we're also guinea pigs up here. I mentioned earlier for what our bodies do in space. And so we're guinea pigs for watching what happens to our bones and our muscles in space. And so that we do you know, research on ourselves, measuring our hearts and our muscles, actually the size and thickness of our muscles and the strength of our muscles. So there's lots of different science going on up here. Some of the science is, is uh, looking out the windows to measure and record things that are going on on the Earth. We have a new, fairly new piece of equipment on the outside of the space station that measures the, the cosmic rays, that's the really, really cool physics stuff, uh, space stuff. Uh, so there's a lot of different science going on up here. Thank cool. you. Okay, nice and loud. Hi, my name is Eleanor. My question is, were you scared or nervous the first time you left Earth? Well, Eleanor, you know, you can't tell anybody this, but yes, uh, it, it's just a little bit. And I, I like to say, you know, you're sitting on top of, a, uh, on the space shuttle, you're sitting on top of a, this, well, the space shuttle on the ground weighs about four and a half million pounds. And about four million pounds of that is rocket fuel that's about to push you off the planet with those oh, seven million pounds of thrust. So anybody that's not a little concerned getting in a rocket uh, doesn't understand what's going on. So sure, there's a little bit of that, but mostly you're excited, excited about, about starting the mission because we trained for years to prepare for this. We're excited about going and finally getting to do that, which we've trained so long to do. And for a lot of us, myself included, and maybe you, it's a dream that you've had since childhood that, that's finally coming true. Thank you. Nice and loud. Hi, my name is Jackie. My question is, why did you choose to be an astronaut? Hey, Jackie, that's a that's a really interesting question. I chose to be an astronaut, or I, I wanted to be an astronaut because I I watched the space miss, space missions when I was you know young, uh, and it was in, my dad really loved the space program and thought it was important, and I m remember watching that and thinking, that's just really cool. That sounds like it's really exciting. Uh, I think it's worth doing. And it, it, uh, it takes a lot of years of preparation, but it's a, it's a great challenge, and it's also great fun. You know, we work hard, but we also have the chance to look out of the windows and see the earth rolling by. And, and I, you know, I love to do that when I get the chance. Or look out the windows at night and watch the stars without the atmosphere between us. The moon looks pretty much the same but the stars really look different from up here. Looks like fun, doesn't it? Okay, nice and loud, partner. Hi, my name is Nikki. My question is, did you see her Hurricane Irene from space? Oh, Nikki, yes, we did see Hurricane Irene from space. We saw that, uh, that big brute of a hurricane uh, as it grew. I actually saw it. As before it was even a hurricane, we saw the clouds starting to form. And of course, we're not professionals in that area, but you can tell when these clouds start to get a big kind of a round circulation pattern going out there that, oh, something's brewing. So we followed that and got video and photos of, of uh, Irene all the way up until it, uh, it hit the coast and then up the coast. And we got some pictures of flooding even. Uh, not so much of the flood water itself, but it was really clear flying overhead uh, that the few days after the storm, how much muddy water was out into the ocean. That kind of came as a surprise to me. I wasn't seeing that, but all those, that water that's floods, it's flooding the towns and so terrible for the people. Eventually it finds its way to the ocean and it's carrying all of that, that rubble, 
people's homes in the dirt and, and stuff. And it showed up in big brown plumes out into the ocean. Very, very interesting and, and sad to see that part of it, too. Yeah. Hi, my name is Allison. My question is, how do you use math in space? <laughs> I, that's a good question, Allison, and, it, and it's a very fair question, too, because all students ask that, that at different points, like, am I ever going to use this? Of course you are. Uh, mostly, I would say I used the math, the, the math that I have used was really the math that it took in my further studies of engineering and science, because you really can't understand the real details of how something works until you can understand the math behind it. When you understand the math behind an orbit, uh, how the space station stays in orbit, well, then you kind of have a feel for how the space station stays in orbit, and I don't have to go back and use the math on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I, I don't use a lot of math uh, every day beyond really simple math. But what that math does is helps my brain learn, helps me learn how to think about things and the, to really develop an understanding of how things work. And that's where the math really comes in important. And it, it, it opens up the world when you can understand the math and apply the math and the physics and science all together, then you really understand how things work. And I think that's really cool. Thank you. Nice and loud. Hi, my name is Victor. My question is, what do you do for fun in space? <laughs> hey, hey, Victor. Well, that's a good question. You've already seen that sometimes we play with our food, <laughs> which, which your mom tells you not to do, but up here you just can't help it. But you do have to clean up your own mess if that sticky Kool-Aid or sti orange drink gets away. Uh, you know, I would say probably the, the favorite pastime of everybody that's been in space when you have some free time is go to the window. It doesn't matter day or night. There, there is something amazing to see outside. And it, that's, I love, you know, our planet. I love being in the outdoors. Uh, and I, I, I get outdoors every chance I get to go hiking. And I love, you know, backpacking around Colorado. I'm really jealous that you guys live in Colorado. It's such a beautiful place beautiful wonderful place to live and so but it, to me it's great to watch it from up above too i'll be backpacking in your mountains again as soon as i can get rehabilitated and get back up there but for now i enjoy looking at them from up above okay thanks okay nice and loud hi my name is carlos my question is how many days will you be in space Is that how many days will I be in space? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll be in space. I think the plan is around 165 days, uh, 160 days, about that. And that might be changing a little bit. There's been a few changes in, in some of our plans. Uh, but it'll be about that, which is just, just short of three months, or six months, rather. And that's a great time. I had two short missions on the space shuttle, which were wonderful, but they were just two weeks. And after two weeks, you're finally starting to kind of get used to living and working up here. Uh, but I'll say after two months, I was still learning how to work up here. And now I've been up here about three and a half months, and uh, it's great. I, I'm enjoying every minute of it. Uh, I'd love to go home and visit my family, but, you know, right now I'm... Just, um, I'm enjoying this and every minute I can. Hi, my name is Avery, and my question is, what is the biggest adjustment to living on the space station? Avery, that's a great question. The biggest adjustment to living on the space station is things don't, they don't fall down. When you drop something, it falls in any direction it wants. It, it just has a mind of its own. So I, I, maybe I'm collecting food for dinner, and I turn my back on it and to get something else out, and then I go looking, and it's not here where I left it. And instinctively, we look down because our whole lives, when you lose something, it probably fell down around your feet. 
and so we, we start looking down, but up here that's absurd because it can fall up just as easy as it can fall down because it, the things we lose don't know up and down. And so, you know, my broccoli has, has gone out that way, out of my reach and out of my sight, and so you lose stuff. And that is, uh, that's really frustrating to be working on things, to have a tool, uh, or you're taking something apart and there's little pieces and you're trying to control them, trying to stick them to a piece of duct tape or trying to get them into a, a, a baggie or something like that so you don't lose them and, uh, and something escapes. Uh, and that's a, that's a big adjustment is learning how to control all of your things because they, uh, they will wander off in their own directions. Thanks. Good question. Hi, my name is Erica. My question is, have you ever been outside of the spaceship? Uh, yes, Erica, I've been outside of the space station seven times doing spacewalks. Um, and that is an amazing experience to be outside working on it. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's actually it's a very physical thing because you're moving around in this spacesuit that's that's inflated, it's pressurized to help keep the oxygen, you know, environment around your body uh, to one where you can, you, you, you know, can live and, and work hard and be strong in. Uh, at the same time, the suit is thick, and so you're working against this inflated suit, and everything you grab, you're walking, we call it spacewalks, but our legs don't do very much. We use our hands to move around the, uh, the space station as we're moving around out there and going from one place to another. And so it feels, sometimes it feels kind of like you're a fly on the ceiling that's just hanging on by its, by its little claw tips and looking down at the earth is, uh, from outside, looking not through these big thick windows, but through the thin bubble helmet. Is, uh, that's pretty amazing. Hi, my name is Mimi, and my question is, what is your mission on the ISS? Hi, Mimi. Uh, th this has been a, a very challenging time in the ISS. We have been building the ISS since 2000, or really since the 98, the first pieces came up. The first people came up here in the, in the year 2000, and we've had people up here continuously since then with uh, fairly regular visits from the space shuttle for most of that time uh, as we have been building the space station. We are now done. And the space shuttles flew its last flight a couple of months ago. So there are no more space shuttle missions to the space station. And we've transi we're transitioning now from a time of assembly where you're worried about getting ready for the next big piece of space station that's coming up. Now that's, that's behind us. We have accomplished that. Uh, and now we're, we're moving into bringing these new experiment facilities uh, into operation and starting up a lot of the work that the space station was really built to do. So now we can focus on that. A couple of years ago, we went from a three-person crew up to a six-person crew, which gives us more people to do more of the science and stuff. Right now, we're down to three people for a little while. So we're doing our best to keep that momentum going. And uh, that, that's our mission, is to first to you know, keep the space station operating safely, and second is to do a lot of these different science experiments. And some of them we get real hands-on where we're physically doing things ourselves and observing and recording. And some of them, we're just the, the people that change the samples in the furnace. You know, I don't, they, don't, they don't let me loose with a, a thousand degree furnace, but well, I'll get in there, change the samples and stuff, and then get it all inspected and closed out. And then the, the scientists on the ground are actually running the experiment from down on, on Earth and uh, they're controlling the furnace up here, and then we'll bring those samples home someday. Great question. Hi, my name is Isabella. My, my question is, what does Earth look like from space? Uh, Earth is beautiful from space. I'd, I'd seen the pictures. But to me, it, I, I didn't really understand it until I looked the first time. On my first space shuttle mission, my job was to take photographs of the fuel tank as it fell away from the space shuttle. And so, you know, I, I got to un take off my seat belts and jump up and go to the window as soon as we got to space, which happens fairly quickly. And so I jump up and I'm looking out and I realize I'm looking at the Atlantic Ocean down below with these little 
dappling of white clouds on the top, and then there's a black sky up above, totally black, and in between was a big curve of the earth because the horizon was curved, and I saw out at arm's length this little thin band that's our atmosphere. And I, it, it shocked me to see how thin that really looks from space. But the Earth is beautiful. You see the oceans, the clouds, the, the, uh, the, the, the land masses, and, and that's so varied. The mountains, the deserts, the forests, uh, the lakes, and there's always something different to see. It is phenomenally. I'd say Earth is probably my favorite planet. <laughs> Mike, this is Dottie. We're here in Colorado, and it's just been so wonderful to talk with you and just hear your answers. And uh, we're sending a big shout out. You guys want to shout out to Mike in space? <laughs> Oh, you guys are awesome. Dottie, you are wonderful. Thank you so much for being there and for the, uh, for the folks in Denver. What a great event. The kids, super questions, super questions. Keep asking those questions, and I hope you get to come find your own answers someday. Thanks a bunch. It's been great joining you guys today. Station. This is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Fisk Planetarium and the University of Colorado. Station, you're a big hit. We are now resuming operational communications.